Are you ready to hack your brain with one of Elon Musk's Neuralink's chip implants? Let's talk about it. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for Tea Time. Today, we have a little bit of misty morning and focus combination. So good, so good. I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hanging out, talking tech, talking photo, talking video. Today is a technology day. We're gonna be talking about Elon Musk, Neuralink. Very cool stuff, futuristic. Well, as of just a couple of days ago, the very first human patient had one of these inserted into their brain. So I wanna talk a little bit about it and I wanna get your thoughts on it. Do you think it's a good thing? Do you think it's a bad thing? And we're gonna dive into it a little bit, as I always do, get a little deeper into it. I read a couple of articles. I wanna bring one of them to your attention. And then once again, I wanna get your thoughts on it. So before we dive into the article, the question is what the hell is Neuralink anyway? Some people know what Neuralink is, some people don't. So I looked it up so we get an exact description of what it is. It says Neuralink device itself consists of a tiny implantable chip sometimes referred to as a neural lace that is embedded into the brain. The chip is connected to a series of flexible threads, each thinner than a human hair, which contains electrodes for both recording and stimulating neural activity. These threads are inserted into the brain using a specialized surgical robot designed to minimize trauma and ensure precision. Yeah, you wanna be kind of precise when you're sticking things in your brain, I would imagine. The basic operation of Neuralink involves recording electrical signals from a large population of neurons in the brain, analyzing these signals and deciphering thoughts or intentions, and then using this information to control external devices or provide feedback to the brain in real time. Additionally, the Neuralink aims to enable two-way communication, allowing external devices to send signals back to the brain to provide sensory feedback or augmentative cognitive ability. Neuralink's long-term vision includes applications such as restoring movement and communication abilities to individuals with paralysis, treating neurological disorders, enhancing cognitive abilities, and ultimately achieving a symbiotic relationship between humans and artificial intelligence. Eesh. I don't know about that last section, but this is what they state. This is what the whole Neuralink is all about. They've been working on this for many years. Well, finally, they've come out of animal studies to now go to human studies. And the first person basically had this installed. So Elon Musk said that it was promising and it looked good and everything is copacetic, let's just say. But anyways, this article I found over on Wired Magazine, I believe it was, I read a bunch of them, but this one was pretty short, concise. I just wanted to read some of this to you. But once again, I wanna get your thoughts on this. What do you think about all this? Is this something that you think is a positive or a negative? Or maybe it's both. I wanna know your thoughts. So as I'm going through this, I'll give you my ideas, my commentary after reading this, but more importantly, I wanna hear from you down below. Before I get into this article, I wanna say that if you haven't downloaded any of my eBooks, check them out, they're free. Go to jchristina.com forward slash books. Also, if you enjoy this content, even the least, consider giving it a thumbs up. That'd be very helpful. Don't forget to subscribe. If you're already subscribed, thank you very much. Click this little button over here so when I go live and when a new video comes out, you'll be notified of it immediately. And if you wanna say thank you for all of my hard work, there's a little thank you button right down here. Click on that, give a dollar or two if you like. If not, that's perfectly fine. Consider becoming a member of the channel. That would be even better. And if you want more content like this or even Starlink content, Elon Musk content, I'll put a link over here about 240 videos just on this kind of thing. So go check them out. Anyways, guys, let's get into this article. Once again, this was by Wired Magazine. We wanna give credit where credit is due. After years of delay, Neuralink started recruiting patients for a clinical trial in the fall after receiving approval from the US Food and Drug Administration the FDA, and a hospital ethics board. The company is developing a device called a brain-computer interface, also BCI in short. Musk has said that the Neuralink's ultimate goal is to, quote, 
achieve a symbiosis with artificial intelligence. But for now, he's starting with a far more modest aim, allowing paralyzed people to control a cursor or keyboard with their brains. Well, modest or not, that is really pretty big especially if you are a quadriplegic or have some type of neurological disease it makes it very difficult to communicate this could be a very big thing for you the article continues Neuralink says it's recruiting patients with quadriplegia or paralysis of all four limbs due to cervical spinal cord injury or ALS or Lou Gehrig's disease, other words known as ALS, and who is at least 22 years old. It anticipates the study will take six years to complete. In its brochure, the company says that it will use a surgical robot it developed to place the implant into a region of the brain that controls movement intention. Once in place, the coin-sized device is designed to record and transmit brain signals wirelessly to an app that decodes those signals. In his post on Monday, Musk added that the patient was, quote, recovering well, and that the initial results show promising neuron spike detection. However, it could be months before we know whether the patient can successfully use the implant to control a computer or other device. The person will have to recover from surgery and then several weeks of BCI training. Once again, BCI is brain computer interface. Until recently, BCIs were largely pursued by academic labs. They required clunky setups using thick cables that made them impractical for use at home. Neuralink's system is designed to be wireless and record neural activity through more than 1,000 electrodes distributed across 64 threads, each thread thinner than a human hair. So if we think about those numbers, they're putting 1,000 electrodes on 64 strands or 64 threads. So that's very interesting. That's 1,000 electrodes that can now receive the neurological data, right? The neurons firing, let's say. Now, if Elon Musk Neuralink could put 1,000 electrodes on 64 threads, well, probably not in the too distant future, we'll see a doubling of that. So 128 threads would be 2,000 electrodes. 256, now we double that, 4,000. 512, double that to 8,000. That's all good and all, but how about if we work it the other way? Instead of putting more mesh, let's say in there, more threads, how about if we just simply put more electrodes per thread? Think about that. If we were able to put, let's say, a magnitude more electrodes per thread, instead of having that 1,000 and move it to 10,000 for that 64, that is a massive difference. And then you don't need as many threads in the brain. I would imagine less is probably better. <laughs> less is more, so to speak. So if you did the math on that, 128 would give you 20,000 electrodes. 256 would give you 40,000. 512 would give you 80,000 electrodes. That is a lot of data, a ton of data. Now, how much data is going to be needed? I don't know, but that's a lot. I think that they'll probably end up concentrating on the number of electrodes per strand in comparison to how many strands they can possibly stick into your head. That's my personal opinion. But remember, there's all different portions of your brain anyways. So they would not only have to go to different areas to do different things, but they would have to go to different depths because right now those strands are only going in a little tiny bit, whereas a lot of that deep level stuff that goes on needs to be in a lot. How to do that, I really don't know, but that's up to them to figure out. Now, the article finalizes with this. They go a little bit negative because that's what Wired does. Anyways, they said the company is also beset by controversy, particularly around the treatment of research animals. Of course, a Wired investigation in September detailed how some monkeys had died as a result of the company's brain implant testing. Now, before I go any further, we know that this is going to happen. You're either going to test on animals or you're going to test on humans. You are most likely going to test on animals. Cosmetics, for example. Every single cosmetic company for a gazillion years 
has been testing on animals. Now all of a sudden you're finding some companies say we do not test on animals, we do not test on animals. And the reason they don't is because they already did. And it's the same chemical. That's all they do is change the little things up and they know that it's not going to make that big of a deal. So they don't need to test on animals anymore because they already did. So the way I look at this is yes, some of the monkeys are probably going to die due to infection, due to whatever the issue is. And these are the type of things that need to happen before they actually try it on a human, right? You don't want your grandfather or your grandmother dying as a result of this trial, right? So that's why they do this. So, I mean, I'm an animal advocate. I absolutely love animals. Obviously, I live nearly on a farm. I'm out in the middle of nowhere with chickens and everything else. We have assortment, let's say. So I absolutely love animals, but I do understand that there's going to be a time when animals need to be tested on before they test on humans. The same thing holds true way back when we went to the moon. We launched a lot of monkeys into outer space before we launched ourselves. Do some research, you'll see. <laughs> the company is reportedly facing a federal investigation related its treatment of animal subjects. And this month, a Reuters report revealed that Neuralink was fined for violating U.S. Department of Transportation rules regarding the movement of hazardous material. Now, that sounds all very nefarious, right? Transportation of hazardous material. It could be something as simple as taking a needle that you used on, let's say, said monkey and sticking it into one of those red jars where you put needles and then close the top and maybe they didn't close it all the way. Right now, the only details available on the Neuralink surgery comes from a single must tweet. While it may not move the needle on merging humans with AI, it would represent a critical milestone for a promising device. And I agree with that. So the way I look at this is, and I wanna know once again, your thoughts. I'm gonna give you mine. Someone like Stephen Hawking, for example, that is a brilliant mind. Now there's a lot of controversy going on with him and Epstein and, and, and it was fake that he isn't really paralyzed. He doesn't really have this neurological disease. He actually is perfectly fine. Man, you hear all kinds of crazy ass. Anyways, Stephen Hawking's beautiful mind, absolutely a beautiful mind, pardon the pun, he would be absolutely perfect for this type of device. Now, he was using something that was called the equalizer, right? And it was attached to his cheek. And a program would run words, let's say, across the screen. And whenever he wanted the words to stop, because he wanted that word in a sentence that he was trying to articulate, he would just twitch his cheek. That's it. Just a little twitch and it would stop. And that is all. That's how it basically worked. The problem is, is how much information can you articulate with such a laborious task to be able to get something across? So the software had to anticipate what he was trying to say before he said it. Basically what Siri would do or some type of speech recognition. It would think ahead and say, oh, maybe he's going to say this. So you don't actually have to say it. Or like when you're typing an email and it fills it in for you, right? The same thing holds true with this, but he wasn't able to get all of this information out. Could you imagine if he had this ability or he had this type of connection to the computer where he could just think and it would actually do instead of having scrolling nonsense where he can actually think and move a cursor around himself and be able to click on things himself and open applications himself instead of having once again this more let's say obtrusive means of communication how much more would we have been able to learn from someone like stephen hawking i think a ton so where i can see that there could be a problem because you do have a device in your brain any kind of computer device can be hacked trust me i'm an old school hacker right? I've been doing this. I've been working on computers way back since the Apple times when I was hacking the Apple twos, right? That was just how it was. I was writing an assembly code and burning EPROMs. That's me. So, I mean, I get it. And yes, this could end up being a problem, but the benefits that this Neuralink can provide, I think far, far outweighs the negatives, especially right now.
If you are someone with ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease, and you lost your motor control, and now you're having a problem communicating with your loved ones, this would be life-changing for you. And I guarantee you, you would wanna be first on the list to try it out, even if it means death. Think about it, right? It's very easy to come up with these ideas of, oh, you know, things are bad because of this, that, and the other thing. But until you walk a mile in another man's or woman's shoes, you probably can't, or you shouldn't at least, right? And that goes back to being able to try, let's say, drugs. Remember that whole thing came up? The right to be able to try to save your own life, even if the drug is not FDA approved. I think that is the right thing to do. But at any rate, I want to know your thoughts about this. Do you think that this is good or do you think it's bad? Or do you think it's something in the middle? Do you think that this could be hacked and now all of a sudden someone takes control over someone's brain? I mean, as of right now, guys, this is only controlling a very specific region of the brain. Movement intention. That's basically it. And that bilateral communication, bi-directional communication, where it could not only read the information from your brain, what you're trying to do, once again, movement-wise, but then also give you feedback so that you have this augmented let's say reality, augmented ability to feel that this action actually did occur. So I think that this is just Star Trek, you know, type of stuff. I think that it is amazing. I think that it's wonderful. I think once again, someone like Stephen Hawking would do it immediately, if not sooner, to be able to once again, articulate himself a lot easier. So I wanna know, what say you? What do you think about this? Is Neuralink something that you would recommend to a loved one that no longer has the ability to move? A quadriplegic? Someone that can't maybe speak any longer? Would you recommend it? Now, it's hard to say, obviously, because studies are not done, but in a perfect world that the studies are done, six years have gone by and everything proves to be, let's say, copacetic and safe, is this something that you would recommend? Or do you think that the idea of implanting a, let's say, computer into your brain um, could end up being a problem in the distant future? The idea of AI and the merging between human and AI, that symbiosis, that symbiotic relationship, should that be a thing? Should that ever be a thing? Or should it absolutely be a thing? What do you think? Once again, down below, let's have this discussion. Finally, like I said before, if you enjoy the content, throw it a thumbs up, that'd be very helpful. And head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools I've invented for you and me over the very many years. And hopefully there's something there that you might like. And if there is, please pick it up and support me and my family. Don't forget my teas and my merch. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you in the next one. Love you all. Bye.